the third Indian expedition to Mount Everest, sponsored by the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. Leader of the expedition, Lieutenant Commander A.M.S. Kohli. Deputy Leader, Major Kumar. Members, Mulkraj, Rawat, Vora, Ankami, B.P. Singh, Aluwalia, Bhangu, Joshi, Bahuguna, Chima, Sonam Wangyal, Navang Gombu, Sonam Gyatso, Gurdyal Singh, Dr. Telang, Dr. Chakravarti, Balakrishnan, and the Nepalese liaison officer, Rana. The 24th of February, 1965. Location, Jayanagar, a railhead in Bihar, near the Indo-Nepalese border. Chaos? Confusion? Not really. It'll all sort itself out. 25 tons of equipment and stores. 25 tons to be distributed among 800 porters to carry it all up to the base camp. For higher camps, 50 Sherpas. Sherpas are the backbone of any Himalayan expedition. Tonduk, the cook, rising in rank with each expedition. Now brigadier, soon to be major general. Some of the prettier Sherpanis make eyes at the chief porter to try and get away with smaller loads, but he is inured to feminine guile. Each load of 65 pounds is marked for the particular camp where it will be needed. The bulk of the equipment was fabricated by Indian ordnance factories. For the first time, an Indian expedition carries instant and accelerated freeze-dried food. Last minute preparations, a cold bath before departure. Much lopping off of hair in the hope of growing a lush crop. Major Kumar has no hope. Farewell Jainagar, farewell home and family. Six months of intense feverish activity Planning, securing equipment, selecting the team, organizing the expedition. The planning has been meticulous. The only imponderable is the weather. No bridges here, got to do it the hard way, perhaps the wet way. Dug out canoes to ferry men, women and precious baggage across the Sunkosi, a cold stream from the melting snows of the high Himalayas.
February gone, the first week of March, the daily routine, setting up camp before sundown each day. For the first day, Chang and Rakshi, homemade beer and spirits. Shima loves the stuff. To the man in the city, this bridge would seem dangerous. But this is nothing compared to the hazards that lie ahead. Even though here, a slip can mean a thousand foot fall. Two weeks on the march, and now the first glimpse of the high Himalayas, the abode of the gods. Higher and higher towards the challenge of eternal snow and ice. The first and the second Indian expeditions to Everest had been forced to turn back almost within reach of the summit. Would this be a case of third time lucky? The village of Kumjung, home of many of the Sherpas. Families and friends, happy to see their dear ones again. This is the family of assistant Sardar Pudoji, who never dreamt that he was destined to climb Everest. A school established through the efforts of Sir Edmund Hillary. The members of the expedition play with the children of the mountains, mountaineers of tomorrow, for the urge to climb mountains is in the heart of every Sherpa child.
Kyangboche. Kyangboche has often been described as one of the most beautiful places in the world. The monastery at Kyangboche is situated at a height of 13,000 feet, a famous and sacred center of Buddhist worship. Kyangboche is known as the gateway to the abode of the gods. The lamas of the monastery, on important occasions, enact the eternal conflict between good and evil. Seventeenth day of the trek, the expedition reaches Tiangboche, the last outpost of civilization. A day's march beyond Tiangboche, no more human habitation, only a world of rock and snow and ice. Each high altitude Sherpa is given his mountaineering kit. Boots, crampons, ropes, windproofs, feather jackets. <laughs> Dr. Telang, busy not only with his own charges, but collecting local patients as well. Ten days of acclimatization, and every member of the expedition is fit and well. All the loads have been checked and the expedition is ready to move to the base camp area. In the distance, the eternal plume of Everest, Chomolungna, goddess mother of the earth. This is the route taken by all the successful expeditions to Everest. The British expedition in 1953, the Swiss in 1956, and the American in 1963. Two Indian expeditions in 1960 and 1962 failed when within sight of the summit, beaten back by the fury of the elements. In this difficult terrain and at this altitude, Yaks are the only animals that can carry loads.
March the 22nd, the base camp, under the shadow of Kubutse and Lola, will be home for nearly three months. Not comfortable, living at a height of 18,000 feet, but there are friends to keep on cheerful. The Sherpas are a wonderfully warm people and courageous. There is no master and servant relationship here, no employer to employee relationship. No Sherpa will risk his life on desolate slope or high ridge unless you have won his affection. Like a bunch of dedicated rag pickers, members of the expedition rummage in the campsites of previous expeditions. There is a little oxygen in one of the bottles, but the Swiss cheese, any patriotic Swiss would promptly disown. Time to get used to the climbing gear. Time to get used to treacherous ice. Time to put into practice all previous experience. Time to make the self-subservient to be part of a team. The Kumbu Glacier, the first, and some say, the most formidable challenge in the conquest of Everest, even though it is faced so early. This is an unstable region, subject to avalanches, to shifting blocks of ice. Today, a smooth path. Tomorrow, a deep crevasse. It is here that Brittenbach, of the American expedition, lost his life in the quest of the mountaineer's supreme goal. The first phase of the climb, to establish Camp 1 at 20,000 feet and Camp 2, the advanced base camp, at 21,300 feet. Now the task of going to set up the advanced base camp. 
with ice axes, pitons, ropes and ladders. Step by step, cutting each step in a stubborn wall, climbing up a mass of frozen fury. step by step, marking the way for those who will follow, making it safe, or trying to make it safe, for those bringing supplies for the higher camps yet to be established. Kumar's frostbitten toes were amputated after the Nilkant expedition. With his battery heated socks, he will not be able to make the summit. But with the Sherpas, he organizes supplies for higher camps. There are crevasses to be bridged. At lower altitudes, that is to say at altitudes higher than the Matterhorn, logs are used. Vora minus rucksack gives an imitation of a tightrope walker. He doesn't think it's funny. The Sherpas carry aluminium ladders for higher altitudes. There are numerous walls of ice to be climbed, and aluminium ladders are a great help. They save the cutting of steps, they save time. Kohli has tried Everest twice before. Each time is as trying as the first. Each challenge is a new challenge. and higher, climbing numerous ice walls, bridging every crevasse.
Even for making a shortcut, no chances are taken. Frozen fruit, anything will do. Even though high altitudes kill the appetite, it is essential to keep up one's strength. serves many diverse functions, mooring a boat to a dock, for instance. But here, the rope is a lifeline, the only lifeline. A rope ladder is fixed on a steep gradient. Four sections of aluminium ladders put together to make a bridge. A bridge 40 feet long, a tenuous link across a wide chasm. This is the longest man-made bridge at this altitude. altitudes, dehydration is a major problem. Water is important, more important than even in the Sahara. As the members of the party reach the top, there before them lies the Valley of Silence. This is what the Swiss called it. With an apparently British sense of understatement, it was called technically the Western Coombe, an archaic Welsh word which means valley. 
Here is established the advanced base camp, the nerve center of activities beyond this height. The next stage, Camp 3, higher up in the Valley of Silence. Camp 4, on the Lotse face at 25,000 feet. Camp 5, on South Col. Lotse, rising from 22,300 feet to 27,890 feet, the fourth highest peak in the world. There is no need to climb the peak, but it is necessary to traverse across its icy slope to reach South Col. A team of four members and Sherpas cut a slow path across the Lotse face to mark the way. The members were allowed the use of oxygen, but some of them preferred to conserve it for higher reaches. They find fixed ropes left by the Americans a great help. The advance party succeeds in establishing Camp 4 at a height of nearly 25,000 feet, near the rock-strewn slope known as the Yellow Band. The first party returns. The second party moves up to continue the route making.
South Col lies in a depression between Everest and Lhotse. South Col, the most inhospitable place in the Himalayas, much more desolate than the summit. The summit has wonder and a sense of achievement. Here there is depression. It is a place of failure, the highest junkyard in the world. Even a junkyard yields valuables. Some partially used oxygen bottles are found. Among the booty collected is Hari Dang's wallet. He had lost it here in 1962 when he came with the second Indian expedition. Despite lashing winds, the South Col camp was established. Now only one camp to go, and then the summit. If they can make it, it will be something of a record, because no one has attempted the summit so early in the year. This on the 28th of April, with hope and confidence. The weather. Fair weather with occasional strong winds at high altitudes. Winds and temperature in free air at 7.5 kilometers above sea level, westerly, 95 kilometers per hour. Temperature, minus 17 degrees centigrade. But luck has a devilish way of running out. The foul weather predicted by special bulletins over All India Radio. It has come. The meteorologists have been right. Sometimes they're wrong in their forecasts. Why do they have to be right this time? Then the decision to abandon the attempt. Was it all for nothing, the waiting, taut nerves, lungs and ribs aching with the effort to breathe? But this is what mountaineering is. It isn't the conquest so much, it's the challenge that counts. Beaten today, this is only the first round. We'll be back tomorrow, Everest. Gurdial has not been keeping well after three very cold nights at South Col. tea. Brandy is not allowed. Suddenly the sense of depression lifts. There is, after all, another day. night of waiting, 15 days of boredom. The stakes get higher and higher. Losses, by mutual agreement, payable when able. Probably never. Who cares? The stocking of higher camps continues preparing for the second attempt.
they explore the Kumbu Glacier, a walk along slippery Phantom Alley. How do the Eskimos live? Let's find out. Alas, no one to rub noses with. Just as well. No time for romance. They have to keep fit at all costs. Tomorrow or the day after, the weather might clear. Then, the challenge once more. This is All India Radio, and here is the weather bulletin for the Indian Everest expedition. Generally fair weather, isolated thundery developments possible on ridges during evening. When Confirmation of weather bulletins is received from Delhi. Time to choose the summiters, or rather, the potential summiters. Oh, good, come in. Oh, Koli, I hope it's not the... Unpleasant job of trapping the summiters again? No, uh, well, in a way, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, the weather seems to be now taking a turn. And uh, in fact, I'm getting a little fed up with this three weeks of terrible stay in the base camp. And uh, I thought I would again check up our summit parties. These two would uh, get on extremely well, and so are the first two. Well, uh, that means Gompu's lot to care with the tall man again, never mind. If he's done it with Whitaker, he could do it with somebody else also. And the two Sonams together. Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. Guru, how are you feeling this morning? I had a very good night, thank you. I can see your eyes once again fixed on Everest. After so many days of bad weather, it seems that lull has started. I have sent a signal to Mr. Sreen this morning, asking for confirmation from the weather department. If this good weather holds for a couple of days, I am thinking of sending the summit parties tomorrow, or perhaps at the most day after. Therefore, I thought I might announce the summit parties today. Well, the parties are almost the same, but I have made slight changes. After our first attempt towards the end of April, which unfortunately had to be called off, I am not in favor of putting four clambers in one party. Therefore, I have decided on a pair each the first party will consist of Gombu and Chima. The second party of Sonam Gyatso and Sonam Vangyal. The third party will be C.P. Vora and Ankami. It depends on oxygen whether we can send four climbers or two climbers in the last party. The last four will be Bhagna, Aluwalia, B.P. Singh and Rawat. I hope all of you are ready, and if the final confirmation comes today from Mr. Sreen, you should be able to leave tomorrow. I say, Sonam, I hope you have made arrangements for the food to be taken to the summit. Yes, I have already talked to our General Tendu um, regarding our, uh, especially regarding chicken part. I would like to include uh, six or seven roasted uh, Chicken from base camp, will it be possible? Please, Sonam, talk for yourself. I can't <laughs> <laughs> Can we really put ten men on top of Everest? Six Americans made the summit. Kumar, who is something of a gambler, has made a bet that eleven Indians will reach the summit. Perhaps if the elements are kind and if the oxygen lasts out, it might be done, God willing.
once again the ice falls, back along the same route. Will the good weather hold out this time? It has been said that a mountaineer is always the gainer, even if he doesn't make the summit. He begins to understand the meaning of sacrifice, the importance of healthy physique, the value of comradeship. In an adventure of this kind, a man can know victory without pride. He can know defeat without despair. But either way, no man who challenges Everest will ever be the same again. Once again, the dreaded Valley of Silence. Once again, the advanced base camp. Once again, the formidable Lotse Faith. Again, the pain in the chest, the aching ribs, the torture of high altitudes. Chima, Gombu, Gurdiar, accompanied by Sherpas, move up the Lotse Faith. South Call Camp is reactivated. And now for the final phase, Camp 6, as near to the summit as possible then on to the summit. 7.30 a.m., May the 19th, Gombu and Chima, accompanied by Sherpas, leave South Col to establish the summit camp. The Sherpas possess magnificent physical stamina, cheerfulness, and willingness to work. They're willing to accept any challenge anywhere on the heights. Of 44 climbing Sherpas, 41 carried loads to South Col. 19 of them up to the last camp.
the team succeeds in setting up the summit camp at an incredible height of nearly 28,000 feet, something that's never been done before. May the 20th, 1965. Chima and Gombu are awake at 3 a.m. They're getting ready for the final assault. Gombu remembers when he reached the top with the American, James Whitaker. Can he do it again? Will he be the first man to have climbed Everest twice? For Chima, it will be the first time. In his excitement, Gombu forgets to put on the boot covers. Of course, he puts them on later. A number of observation posts have been established, including one on the Pumori shoulder. A watch is kept from South Col and the advance base camp. Base for four. Uh, Guru, can you see them? Guru, can you see them? Over. Uh, four to two. Mohan, I got fleeting glimpses of them a few minutes ago. So did Navang Dorji, in fact. But I am afraid we have lost sight of them. Uh, yes, yes, wait, wait. I can hear Navang Dorji. He's saying something. He's saying something. He says he can see them. Yes, he says he can see them. Over. Uh, Guru, that's wonderful. Where are they? They must be near the south summit now. Over. Four to two, four to two, Mohan, wait a bit, I'm afraid my fingers are a bit numb, I can't press uh, the, the, the button properly, do, do pardon me, yes, yes, I'm, I can do it better now, uh, Noang Dorje says he can see them clearly, and I poked my head out of the tent and I can see them too, I think they are just over a hundred feet below the south summit, but I may be wrong about the height, over. Yes, I can see them, they are on a lower, uh, lower snow field, I can see them clearly, they are going up. They are going up and, and they are moving up. I can see them. And
the Indian tricolor is on the top of the world at 9.30 a.m. Chima and Gombu have done it. They place a number of flags and mementos on the summit. The summiters see below them the Rongbuk Glacier and the Tibetan Plateau beyond, the route of all the pre-war expeditions to Everest. Advanced base calling base camp. Advanced base calling base camp. Report signals. Over. Hello, base camp calling advanced base camp. Base camp calling advanced base camp. Over. Hello, bull. Hello, bull. Any news? Any news? Over. Hello, colleague. Runner saw them about 50 feet below the summit. When they were returning, I'm certain they have made it. I'm certain they have made it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Over. Hello. Hello, bull. Wonderful. I'm certain they would have done it. Congratulations. Now you can open the brandy. Hello, yes. Not one. We will open three brandy bottles. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations once again. Out to you. Hello. Hello. Advance to four. Advance to four. Guru, I presume you have been listening. Four to two, Mohan. Yes, yes. I've been on the listening watch. I've been following your conversation with Bull intently. And I'm very sure that they've got to the top. But I shall await confirmation from Chima when he returns to camp. I think that will be round about one. I'm sorry you can't open the brandy. Uh, four to two, four to two, Mohan. I wish I could join you all. Navang Dorji is with me and we've been looking around what we have with us. I'm afraid there's just a tin of fruit juice. We shall open it shortly. Anyway, very good news. I'm very glad of the excitement at base camp. I'm sure it's all justifiable. We are all delighted here. The only thing is the, uh, there's far too little oxygen for us to do much about it. Over. Go to last camp, go to last camp, over. Last camp calling camp four. Can you hear, can you hear, over. Uh, go to last camp, Gombu, yes, now tell me what happened. Last camp camp four, we reach on the summit, 9.30, 9.30, we spend half an hour on the summit, over. Good show, Gombu, yippee, give me more details of the climb, give me more details of the climb. Camp four. We reach, uh, we reach on the summit, all right. Coming down, little blazer, little snowy, and Chima was not so well with the eyes. We reach on last camp, quarter to one, over. Good, Gombo. Now, what are the plans? When do you intend to go down to the south call, over? We going down south call. Today, we want to take first little rest. They want to drink some juice and quite snowing, we want to come down to the south call over. Down below at south call. Time for the two Sonams to get ready. No more snoring for Sonam Gyatso. Time for work. He ought to have slept with his clothes on. No book of rules for him. two Sonams. Accompanied by four Sherpas, they move towards the summit camp. The weather deteriorates. 
the wind speed rises to about 140 kilometers per hour. Visibility is now poor. They get lost before finally making the camp. Meanwhile, the first summit party returns to the advanced base camp. There is no meeting quite so unique as the meeting of those who have braved the great peril of the Himalayas. It is a warmth which perhaps compensates for agonized lungs and cruel frostbite, the true warmth of friendship. May the 22nd, the two Sonams start off towards the summit. Both of them carry prayer flags. Sonam Gyatso, who has frostbite on his waist because of a torn feather coat, finds the going tough. In spite of frostbite and devilish weather, after six agonizing hours, they make the summit the oldest and the youngest ever to have climbed Everest. May the 24th, Ankami and Bora find the weather excellent and make brisk progress, though brisk at this height means almost slow motion. the tricolor planted by the earlier teams. They take this last shot before the movie camera gives way. Vora and Ankami reach the summit. Like the Americans, the Indians have put six men on top of Everest. Can they break this record? Will a fourth team be able to make the summit? Advanced base calling last camp. Advanced base calling last camp. Report signals. Over. हम लोग पांच बजे यहाँ से निकाला था उतर समीर के ऊपर दस बजे सारे दस बजे पहुँचा. Over. शाबाश, शाबाश. बहुत अच्छा, बहुत अच्छा. अभी आप जरा बोरा साहब से उनको दीजिए. Last camp for advanced base. We were for full one hour on the summit. For some time I had taken off my oxygen also. To conserve it, but still I ran out of it just below South Summit, and that is one reason why my feet are cold. Over. Down at the base camp, Pudorji is persuaded to become the fifth member of the last party. Unfortunately, B.P. Singh is unwell and drops out. Again, only four are left. 
thunderstorm activity likely at low altitudes, especially towards evening. Light snow possible... At higher altitudes, weather conditions begin to deteriorate with strong prevailing winds. On May the 25th, an avalanche. All the tents at Camp 3 are buried under five to six feet of snow. Fortunately, this camp was unoccupied, but 12 bottles of precious oxygen were stored here. Commander Coley has a difficult decision to make. If the supplies are not recovered, it would be almost impossible to send up more than two men. Aluwalia and the Sherpas pray for recovery of the oxygen. Suspense, hope, fear of disappointment. have been kind. Not a single bottle of oxygen has been lost. Fantastic luck. The oxygen bottles are tested. Each bottle weighs about 13 pounds. Consumed at the rate of four liters a minute, the oxygen can last for approximately four hours. The third summit party returns. It is often forgotten that it is as difficult to climb down a mountain as it is to go up, often more difficult because of fatigue. The team consisting of Aluwalia, Rawat, Bahuguna, and Assistant Sardar Pudorji, accompanied by seven Sherpas, moves to South Col and beyond, reaching the summit camp on May the 28th. May the 29th. Aluwalia and Pudorji start off early in the morning on one rope. A little later, Rawat's rope mate Bahuguna develops stomach trouble and has to turn back. Rawat continues towards the summit alone. The only man ever to walk alone at heights beyond 28,000 feet. After walking along the razor's edge for quite some time, he joins Aluwalia and Pudurji.
12 years ago on this day, the 29th of May, 1953, Hillary and Tensing had climbed the summit of Everest for the first time. Now, for the first time in history, three men stand together on the roof of the world at 29,028 feet. It has been said that on a mountaintop, a man does not think of himself as part of a great purpose. In the everlasting snows, he becomes the purpose. The way of courage is without beginning and without end. 